you, clone, a bond, its history, part three. The four is of core to the unholy temple. Globally, all the legalistic scams promoted by the exclusive monopoly of the Temple Bar and their Bar Association franchises come from forums or temples of court. The Inner Temple, please view at http colon double slash www.innertemple.org.uk slash the Middle Temple, please view at http colon double slash www.midletemple.org.uk slash The Lincoln's Inn, please view at http colon double slash www.lincolnsin.org.uk slash The Gray's Inn, please view at http colon double slash www.gracein.info slash These inns slash temples are exclusive and private country clubs, secret societies of world power in commerce. They are well established, some having been founded in the early 1200s. The Queen and Queen Mother of England are current members of both the Inner Temple and Middle Temple. Gray's Inn specializes in taxation legalities by rule and code for the Crown. Lincoln's Inn received its name from the 3rd Earl of Lincoln, circa 1300. Just like all US-based franchise bar associations, none of the four inns of the temple are incorporated. For a definite and purposeful reason, you can't make claim against a non-entity and a non-being. They are private societies without charters or statutes, and their so-called constitutions are based solely on custom and self-regulation. In other words, they exist as secret societies without a public front door, unless you're a private member called to their bar. While the Inner Temple holds the legal system franchise by license to steal from Canada and Great Britain, it is the Middle Temple that has legal license to steal from America. This comes about directly via their Bar Association franchises to the Honorable Society of the Middle Temple through the Crown Temple. From the history of the Inn, later centuries, left square bracket page 6 right square bracket, written by the Honorable Society of the Middle Temple, we can see a direct tie to the Bar Association franchises and its crown signatories in America. Call to the Bar or keeping terms in one of the four inns a prerequisite to call at King's Inns until late in the 19th century. In the 17th and 18th centuries, students came from the American colonies and from many of the West Indian islands. The inn's records would lead one to suppose that for a time there was hardly a young gentleman in Charleston who had not studied here. Five of the signatories to the Declaration of Independence were Middle Templars, and notwithstanding it and its consequences, Americans continued to come here until the War of 1812. All Bar Association licensed attorneys must keep the terms of their oath to the Crown Temple in order to be accepted or called to bar at any of the King's Inns. Their oath, pledge, and terms of allegiance are made to the Crown Temple. It's a real eye-opener to know that the Middle Inn of the Crown Temple has publicly acknowledged there were at least five Templar bar attorneys under solemn oath only to the Crown who signed what was alleged to be an American Declaration of Independence. This simply means that both parties to the Declaration Agreement were of the same origin, the Crown Temple. In case you don't understand the importance of this, there is no international agreement or treaty that will ever be honored, or will ever have lawful effect, when the same party signs as both the first and second parties. It's merely a worthless piece of paper with no lawful authority when both sides to any agreement are actually the same. In reality, the American Declaration of Independence was nothing more than an internal memo of the Crown Temple made among its private members. 
By example, Alexander Hamilton was one of those numerous Crown Templars who was called to their bar. In 1774, he entered King's College in New York City, which was funded by members of the London King's Inns, now named Columbia University. In 1777, he became a personal aide and private secretary to George Washington during the American Revolution. In May of 1782, Hamilton began studying law in Albany, New York, and within six months had completed a three-year course of studies, passed his examinations, and was admitted to the New York Bar. Of course, the New York Bar Association was slash is a franchise of the Crown Temple through the Middle Inn. After a year's service in Congress during the 1782 to 1783 session, he settled down to legal practice in New York City as Alexander Hamilton, Esquire. In February of 1784, he wrote the charter for and became a founding member of the Bank of New York, the state's first bank. He secured a place on the New York delegation to the Federal Convention of 1787 at Philadelphia. In a five-hour speech on June 18, he stated an executive for life will be an elective monarch. When all his anti-federalist New York colleagues withdrew from the convention in protest, he alone signed the Constitution for the United States of America representing New York State, one of the legal crown states, colonies. One should particularly notice that a lawful state is made up of the people, but a state is a legal entity of the crown, a crown colony. This is an example of the deceptive ways the Crown Temple, Middle Templars, have taken control of America since the beginning of our settlements. Later, as President is U.S. Treasury Secretary, Hamilton alone laid the foundation of the first federal U.S. Central Bank, secured credit through Crown in France and the Netherlands, and increased the power of the federal government over the hoodwinked states of the Union. Hamilton had never made a secret of the fact that he admired the government and fiscal policies of Great Britain. Americans were fooled into believing that the legal crown colonies comprising New England were independent nation-states, but they never were nor are today. They were and still are colonies of the Crown Temple, through letters patent and charters, who have no legal authority to be independent from the rule and order of the Crown Temple. A legal state is a Crown Temple colony. Neither the American people nor the Queen of Britain own America. The Crown Temple owns America through the deception of those who have sworn their allegiance by oath to the Middle Templar Bar. The Crown Bankers and their Middle Templar attorneys rule America through unlawful contracts, unlawful taxes, and contract documents of false equity through debt deceit, all strictly enforced by their completely unlawful, but legal, orders, rules and codes of the Crown Temple Courts, our so-called judiciary in America. This is, because the Crown Temple holds the land titles and estate deeds to all of North America. The biggest lie is what the Crown and its agents refer to as the rule of law. In reality, it is not about law at all, but solely about the Crown rule of all nations. For example, just read what President Bush stated on November 13, 2001, regarding the rule of law. Our countries are embarked on a new relationship for the 21st century, founded on a commitment to the values of democracy, the free market, and the rule of law, joint statement by President George W. Bush and President Vladimir V. Putin on November 13, 01, spoken from the White House, Washington, D.C. By rule of mystery Babylon, please view at http colon double slash nesera dot insight s two dot org